He deserves our praise. He deserves our tears. He deserves our worry. He deserves our wants. He deserves our bad words when we feel like saying them. Hallelujah. He deserves it. He deserves it. Amen. Somebody say amen. Oh, thank the Lord. Praise his holy name. He deserves our worship, our songs, our prayers. And even our preaching. Amen. He's a good God. Would you say that? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Andre. Amen. 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 Good morning, Parks Chapel. It's good to be back in the house one more time for my brother and, the, and my son. I've known him since he was very young. Pastor Kirkpatrick Tyler. Amen. He's doing a wonderful job. Amen. 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 To Bishop Clement W. Few and Supervisor Few to Presiding Elders Lindsay and Williams to Pastor Cager, Pastor of Ward AME, my church, to the angel of this house, Pastor Kirkpatrick Tyler, to the officers, members, musicians, tech ushers, and all those assemble here. I greet you in the matchless and marvelous name who deserves our praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father in heaven, we come before you, God, just saying hallelujah one more time. We ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer. And we'll be ever so careful to give you all the praise, the honor, and glory at this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, there's a word for you this morning. Amen. And it's coming from the book of Psalms. Psalm 118. If you have your Bible somewhere, somebody has it on their phone, somebody might have the book, but that's okay. You got it. Amen. Uh, Psalm 118, I'm going to read it for you, verses 6 through 17, and it reads this way. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? The Lord is with me. He is my helper. I look in triumph on my enemies. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. All the nations surround me. This is David talking. But in the name of the Lord, I will cut them down. They surrounded me on every side. But in the name of the Lord, I cut them down. They swarmed around me like bees. But they were consumed and quickly as burning thorns 
in the name of the Lord, I cut them down. I was pushed back and about to fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. And he, then he says, I will not die but live and proclaim what the word Lord has done for me. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. God is there. So I'm going to be speaking from the title and the theme, God is in control. He's got this. There's a song that I saw, you know, when I'm doing my little research thing. It just had three, diff three statements. It said, what manner of man is this that winds obey? What manner of man is this that the seas obey? The great one. And he created the heavens and the earth. God can do just what he wants. Because God is in control. He's got this. How many of us or how many of you recognize that God is all powerful? And he always acts right on time. He is sovereign over every situation. God's power is shown by the ways he reveals himself in creation, in history, and in his word. So today, we're going to examine how God shows his power, his control in our faith, in our trust, and in our authority. Are you ready for that? You see, God really is in control. And yes, I said, he's got this, this thing called life. When we feel powerless, God can and will help us. His strength can overcome the despairs of any pain or trial. How many of you believe that? We, amen, give him praise. Yes, yes, yes. We can always, amen. We can always pray that he will deliver, protect, and sustain us. And when we pray, we must believe it. So, my first point is going to say about faith. And the familiar passage that you have heard is, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Somebody knows that, right? And the evidence of things not seen. Somebody might say, well, what does that mean, preacher? But I know there's a lot of scholars out here, so somebody just... If, if you want to know, I'm just going to give you a little bit more. Funny, you should ask. God is faithful when we are faithful. Meaning that even though we can't see it, God's got it. You see, faith is sure and faith is certain. Faith has a beginning point. 
And that is believing in God's character that he says he is who he is. And it has an end point. Believing in God's promises that he will what? Do what he says. Exactly. When we believe that God will fulfill his promises, even though we don't see it, those promises manifesting yet, we demonstrate true faith, like David in the scriptures, like Paul, and remember doubting Thomas. When they were all faced with adversity, the enemy, the sickness, the habit, the decision, it was their faith and your faith that sustained them and can sustain you. Because why? Because God is in control. And he's got this. Hallelujah, somebody. Our second one, trust. Trust. The poetic book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. King Solomon, as led by the Holy Spirit, posed to the young people. Where's my young people? You know, those millennials, those Gen X, those Gen Y. I think there's a Gen Z now. His scripture said, trust, and you know this one too, in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. In this passage, he gives us friendly, practical, and familiar advice about trust. He instructed and taught the young people way back then of the day like parents giving advice to their children. How many parents are out there today? Sometimes it's like you're talking to a wall. Can I get an amen? Or they might turn their back. Or they might roll their eyes. Amen. Somebody. Have mercy. Yes, even back then. But Solomon said, while many of the Proverbs at the beginning of this book were directed towards young people, the meaning, the message, the gist was to support them. Especially now, even beginning their long journey and their new journey to discover this thing called life. Wisdom. That's what it's all about. So children, when your parents start talking to you, remember, it's the wisdom they want you to remember. And we know that talking to our millennials, talking to our baby boomers is a good thing because they offer good advice. May not be the way you want to have it or hear it, but they offer some advice. We do have a little bit to say. We've been down those roads before. Amen. Understanding that if we put all our trust in, in our master, our creator, the counselor, the wise counsel, that once again, he is what? In control. And yes, he's got it. But 
Should that be a simple task, trust, these days has become a battle for some, a battle of will, his will or our will be done. You see, we always want to help God with our request. We pray and then we don't give it to him. We want to help. But God says you don't have to help him because he's got it. He's in control. He really doesn't need our help. Amen. Somebody. And it's okay. I know I'm guilty. Lastly, authority. That's a big one. Listen and obey. In the book of Luke, he gives us this form. Behold, I have given you power and authority to tread over scorpions and snakes and all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. That's a big one. Do you believe it? You know, in the natural, we're thinking and talking about a real scorpion or a snake, we think. But you know who that is. It's just another name for the enemy whose purpose is to deceit us, distract us, destroy us, and he comes in many forms like Facebook Messenger, Instagram. These are the new things. The internet, period. He's all through it. So we have to be vigilant and know that we have a battle. But God is in control with that. We have to listen and we have to see, and then we have to obey. And you take authority. You take the power away from the lies, the games, the deceit, the sickness, the distraction. And I put the fentanyl or the drugs and the opioids, the alcohol, the cancer, the diabetes, the mental illness, the suicide, the divorce, and the list goes on and on when you can take authority over the enemy and use that to tread on those scorpions and those snakes. The control the peer pressure. You see, you may want to know what Psalm 118, 6 through 17 means. Well, this entire passage of scripture talks about how King David faced nation after nation, challenge after challenge, battle after battle, but in every instance, he never gave up. Now, he wasn't the picture-perfect person that we would want him to be. But he was the man after God's own heart. He was chosen by God. You see, he faced all of, those adverse, all of that adversity with confidence with faith, with trust, and authority. And in the NIV version, he celebrated with how the Lord's hand might do mighty things. He shouted, I shall not die. 
but live and proclaim what the Lord has done. And in the Message Bible, he said it a little bit better. He said, I didn't die. I lived. And now I'm telling the world what God did. He tested me. He pushed me hard. But he didn't hand me over to death. So in closing, this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And you see I have rep in the pink today. This is my testimony. I didn't die. I lived. And have lived 30 years cancer free. After. Amen. Amen. After three diagnoses, and I will tell it every chance that I get, God tested me. He pushed me hard through chemo and everything that the enemy tried, but God did not hand me over to death. See, the bargain was, and it's not really, it wasn't really a bargain. I, it was like, God, okay, if you're going to take me all this, all right, I'll do whatever you want. And that's when I got my calling. So remember, God is in control, no matter what you might think. And yes, he's got this, no matter what it is you're going through. Thank you. Let's all stand to our feet. And knowing that God is in control, he is in control of our destinies, our walk, our living, our breathing, everything that we do. So there might be someone here at this time who doesn't know that, who may want to meet him and get to know this God and this Jesus and the Holy Spirit that we know. I would be remiss if I thought that everybody in here knows, knows Jesus in the pardoning of their sins. But if by chance there might be one, this is your time. Meet Jesus at the altar. Give him your hand and your heart. Come and find out who this God is that we say is in control. Amen. Won't you come? He deserves it. That's what the word says. He deserves our hallelujah. And he deserves to know us in the pardoning of our sins. He deserves it. He's done a lot for us. He's been gracious to us. He's been loving to us. He woke us up this morning, started us on our way. Brother Hines said he gets up a little slowly. I said, Brother Hines, hey, I'm right there with you. Amen. But guess what? We got up. Right. We got up. Amen. Good soldier right here. Good soldier, Reverend Dr. L. Fisher Hines. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, being none, I will turn this over to who? The doxology. All right. Well, it has come to that time where we can 
fellowship in our doxology. Go ahead, Brother Andre. Remember, God is in control. He's got this. As you walk out today, reach up and grab it. Let the church say, Good word. <laughs>